Oh, man. Be one of them nights. Yeah, maybe. Hello, and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 154 for Thursday, the 21st of December, 2017. This is a show where two lifelong friends celebrate all things geek. We do not have a guest tonight because uh, they're all busy. They like have plans and family and people that give a shit about them and stuff. How you doing, man? Man, we don't have a guest, but the news of the night is that Amos and I are in the same place at the same time. Well, it's been a while, man. The same virtual place. Well, I mean, take what you can get. <laughs> That's what got Kevin Spacey in trouble. <laughs> uh, oh, too no. Soon? Too soon? I don't know. Oh, uh, um, it'll always be too soon. Hey, man, so... Uh, how, how you did a show by yourself last week? It wasn't bad, um, man. I could well, thanks. I could smack the shit out of you for some of the audio problems, but apparently those were the least of the problems on that show. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah, I had I had some issues. I had um, I had audio playback that I had to find in the middle of the show that I had to edit out. Uh, there was man, there was all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, but the real problem that I had came with the post production when I was trying to publish. The software that I use, I guess the latest update, like fucked it all up because I was able to edit it just fine, just like normal. Uh, but when I went to render the video, it decided that it wanted to sound like this. Like, what the hell? So I tried a few different formats. It didn't help. So I was like, all right, well, maybe I can at least get audio out of this edit. So I, I rendered the audio and it came out sounded like this. I was like, what the fuck? So I had to use iMovie. <laughs> uh, which were, I wow. mean, for what I was doing, you know, it took a little bit longer, but it was fine. I got that done, but I had to, I, I was delayed a day in publishing. So then the next day I was like, all right, I'm ready to publish. Uh, let me get all my files uploaded. Everything was doing fine until archive just wanted to get three quarters of the way through the upload and then say, oh, <laughs> Yeah, never mind. Uh, I'm not going to work. So I click the resume upload, and it starts back at zero. Like, son of a bitch. So I come back like 30 minutes later to check on it. It was about three quarters of the way uploaded and said, oh, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want it. So rinse and repeat about eight times. It still didn't go. So that delayed me another day. And then the next morning before work, I got up and uh, went and uploaded. I was able to upload it that more so I, I guess it was tuesday morning when it finally got published um it's so with archive an, an, am, an amazing service that they're providing i'm not going to knock them for, for oh, providing the service but, absolutely but there are times and and this is something that i know from all the from all the uploads that i've done from this show and others if if you start uploading and right away you start noticing that the numbers are not, it, there's, it's not a, a steady beat of how many megabytes are going up. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you notice that, you're in for it. You're in for <laughs> it. You're done. It's going gonna, it's gonna to do something funny to you, and you're not going to get your upload done. Yeah. Um, yeah. But when it works, funny, it works I'm great. Gonna... Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, in some, sometimes it's, it'll like, well, I've had it to where it'll upload the video, but not the audio. Like the audio file is way smaller than the video file. What are you doing to me right now? Sure. Um, so good times had by all. Um, <laughs> I did listen to the episode and yeah, it was, uh, it is how, how fun was it to hold the mic on your own for 40 plus minutes? Man, it's fun. This is the second time I've done a, a solo show, and I, I enjoy it. But my like mic technique suffers. Uh, not just my actual mic technique, but like my vocal Throat. quality. I get. I don't know. Like I, I've said um probably a million times. Like if I was Richard Gunther picky <laughs> and went to edit out all of my ums, I would still be editing it right now. Um, it was bad. That, that funny you should say though that because he'll be on our show next week, and I'm sure he'll have listened to last week's episode before, <laughs> before he comes on next week. So, um, oh, that should be fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, it it was it was an inch. It's how do I say this? 
doing a show, sitting in front of a mic, in front of a camera, in front of a live audience, and I don't know how many people you had watching last week, but sitting in front of anybody and just talking for 30, 40, 50 minutes, it is nerve wracking. And it's amazing how easy it is to talk to you right now on Skype, knowing people are watching and reading the chat room, things like that. But then as soon as you try to do that by yourself, it amps up the anxiety at least a magnitude. You know, sure. it's it's crazy. So I, I fully respect that. And I, I, I luckily when I had to do the episode without you the previous week, I had Squid that I could fall back on. And uh, he's always he's always happy to come on the show and stuff like that. And luckily that particular day he got off early because of the fires and stuff like that. I guess not luckily, but <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> as as happens, lighting there. <laughs> as happy happenstance would be. Uh, but, but it worked out really well and it, he's watched enough of the show and he, and h- him and I have enough of a flow that it just kind of, kind of flows through the show. But you kind of found out the day before, like, Hey dude, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and you made the Squid best of wasn't it. A, and Squid wasn't available anyway, because right before our show began, he was, the theater was going dark for him to start watching Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, I can't blame him for that. Skip, <laughs> skip R and P for Star Wars. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had my own thoughts about that, but. I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I ended up watching Star Wars, uh, the, the Last Jedi, on Friday morning at eleven o'clock, and listening to you recount how well your local theater handles pre-purchase tickets. Yeah. That thought process, like all of that, because we've already discussed this several times, that was actually in my mind as I was in line to buy my ticket. I left here. I had to go for an appointment last week for my back. So the idea was to leave here about 10 o'clock, get to the theater about 1045 down in North Anchorage, the the good theater, not my local one here that w- didn't have a show in time for me to make my appointment, get my ticket grab maybe some popcorn and a drink because I know it's a two and a half hour movie <laughs> and find a decent seat. Didn't expect to get like perfect seat, you know, the whole uh, middle of the theater, perfect sound, great view. All, I didn't expect to get that, get all that, but didn't really need all that. I left 15 minutes late. So I get there right at 11 o'clock. The weather was blistery cold and the roads were icy. So I couldn't speed my way down. I had to I actually went a little bit below the speed limit. Yeah. I get there. It's 11 o'clock on the dot. The show time is 11 o'clock. And I'm looking at my watch, my little, my, 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 my Apple watch right here is telling me, hey, you've got a movie to watch right now. I didn't pre purchase the tickets because I would have had to go through and reestablish all my Fandango and everything else. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to show up. There's not going to be anybody in line. I was almost right. I got okay. in line. I was the third person in line, three people. The individual in front of me, was waiting for her tickets and she was buying a ticket for a different show. So it didn't even matter. I wasn't about to say, Hey, I'm buying it for, for this one right now. Can, can you excuse? I wasn't trying to be that, that jerk. Right. It's, it's not like an, at an airport when your flight is boarding, when, right. you know, you, you can speed through security sometimes right. because, um, I, uh, the guy in front of her though, that was actually at the window. He was buying gift cards. He was buying a hundred dollars worth of gift cards for three people and wanted them to split it equally. And he, he couldn't do the oh, math in his head, my. and the lady behind oh, the glass couldn't explain with her words how that is not that it doesn't math. <laughs> um, Somebody's gonna pay one cent more. It, but they sat there and argued, like, "Do you want to?" Because she couldn't just come out and say, "Oh, that's gonna be thirty three dollars and thirty three point three 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 repeating cents." Uh, that's not gonna work, dude. <laughs> so she was trying to be like, "Well, do you want to put like thirty five, thirty five, and thirty? Do you?" And, 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 dude was like, "No, I want it split equally," and I. At one point, I looked around like, are there cameras? Is this, <laughs> you know? Are you fucking with me right now? <laughs> right. Uh, and I was, I, was, I was joking with the lady in front of me. I, I, I thought we were on the same train. She goes up there. She's buying tickets, two tickets, one for her, one for her boyfriend slash husband slash significant other slash random dude she ran into in the parking lot. She's paying by check. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Do places still accept checks? Yes. She's paying by check. And then they asked her if she had a rewards card. She said, yes, but I don't have the card with me. The lady says, well, let me look it up. Can I get your phone number? Oh, she goes to three phone numbers before she finally says the right phone number to trigger it. 
And then, and this, but, this, but this, by this time, you were already triggered. I'm, oh my God. It's like eight after 11 by now. And the, the, I thought, okay, well, she got her thing. She's going to go and, you know, she gets a free popcorn or a free drink. She says, I'll take the free popcorn. The other guy says, oh, what was that? And he comes walking over because I don't know if he's like, if he was just wandering off for no fucking reason or what, but he comes walking over. He's like, uh, no, well, let's, let's go and make that a popcorn instead. It, eventually, it comes out where well, she couldn't cancel the free popcorn because it, she'd already printed the ticket with it. So she re- did, gave him a, a free soda with it. What the fuck? <laughs> so it is literally a quarter after 11 by the time I get to the window. I said, I would like a, 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 a ticket for the next showing of Star Wars. I didn't even say what time because I didn't want to get into an argument about, oh, the 11 o'clock one's already started, whatever else. Just... Whatever the next showing of Star Wars is that you can give me, give me that ticket. Mm-hmm. She says, okay, that'll be one uh, matinee for, for um, 11 o'clock. And I was like, that's great. I hand her a $10 bill. I'm paying cash. Mm-hmm. Like no, no need to wait for swipes or bullshits, nothing else. Here's $10 cash. It's the $8.75 ticket. I don't even care about the change. Here's this. Give me this little slip of paper that allows me to walk through the big fat dude in, in, inside that's going <laughs> to... You know, it's always a big fat dude. We're, yeah, uh, I don't. Why is why is that? It's never. It's not bouncer. What's the cause? What's it, the cause and what's the effect? Yeah, you know? it's it's not the 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 corn fed dude. It's like blubber butt. You know, it's. <laughs> and I'm not trying to fat shame at all. It's just that is that is clearly. It, uh, okay, and it's never a chick. It's always a dude. And anyway, yeah. anyway. Um, so I hand her that, and she starts trying to upsell me on shit. At the ticket booth, do you want? Are you a, are you a rewards member? No. Do you would you like to become a rewards member? No. I would like to go see the movie. Would you like uh, a, a free popcorn if you buy a soda ticket now? No. I would like to go see my movie. Like yeah, print. I would like you to print my ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so she finally hands it to me, and I I take it, and she goes, oh sorry, and then she hands me the ticket afterwards. Like she tore the receipt off, handed that to me, then tore the ticket and handed that to me. Okay, fine. So by now it's like I said, it's it's probably seventeen after, because it was it was literally a quarter after when I walked up to the window. I because I, I looked at my watch specifically. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know because sometimes the movie starts at the time that they say. Sometimes the previews start at the time they say. I might be missing like the first couple scenes of the movie at this point, but I don't care. Just get me in the fucking theater. I start walking up to to Mister Big Ass, and I'm expecting him to look at my ticket and compare it. Like I'm at, at this point, I'm expecting not to see the movie until about 1230, you know, because I'm obviously not getting popcorn or drink now. I'm not, get, I'm not going through that charade. He takes it. He doesn't even look at what it is. I said, yeah, I'm just checking out star Wars. He goes, here you go. He tears it and says 14. Doesn't look at my ticket at all. It could have been just a random piece of paper I found <laughs> on the ground. Didn't matter at all. So then I go and I get into the theater. I get into the theater and they're still playing previews. There's still a decent seats off other side of center. So I say, screw it. I'm going to go to the bathroom because the preview they were showing was, I don't know, some Disney shit that I de- definitely didn't want to watch. Mm. Yeah. Went to the bathroom, came back in and still saw, okay, remember, this is like at 20, 25 after, still saw three more previews before the movie started. Wow. Good news is I got to see the whole damn movie. Bad yes. news is why That's do you the- have 30 minutes of essentially commercials before the show starts? Man, yeah, my showing, I, I think they played like maybe four trailers or something, and then we were we were on our way. No, this is I, I saw four trailers between the one that was playing when, when I left <laughs> to go pee and the three that started after I sat down. I saw four trailers, and I didn't get into the theater until like twenty after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I man, so I saw it on Friday night. I was gonna wait until Saturday morning, mm-hmm. like Saturday at eleven, or maybe maybe catch the two o'clock. Either way, Saturday. Uh, but then like Friday was happening. I was at work Mm. and I was like, there, no, no, there's no way I'm waiting. I (laughs) have to see this freaking movie. It's bad enough that I didn't see it last night. I have not been on the internet in like 16 hours and I'm kind (laughs) of like twitching right now. (laughs) I'm watching my, I'm watching my notification badges. Just, just racking up up on my social media. (laughs) Like shit. Like I can't do this any longer. So we booked tickets for like the six forty, I think, mm. that night. And um 
yeah, man, I, I walked out of the theater, just blow, like I couldn't even talk for like probably 10 or 15 minutes, just trying to process what I had seen. Mm. And um, then I went and saw it a couple days later in 3D. Mm. I, this is my first, my first viewing was 2D. I was like, well, I got to see 3D. And um, if I watch it again, that, I'm going to watch it in the 3D IMAX there at that same theater. Just because. Oh, see, must be nice to have it. We have an IMAX. I, I don't know. I've never, I've never seen a 3D IMAX movie. I've seen IMAX, you know, at, like the science centers and shit like that. But oh, 3D IMAX is that is that is how movies should be watched always. <laughs> like it's, it's amazing. Uh, but my the, the IMAX theater in my town is attached to the Space Museum, right? And uh, yeah, they don't play Hollywood movies. They only mm. play like science documentaries. That's how it was like, when I was in Louisiana. What a waste of an IMAX screen. That's, that's how it was when I was in Louisiana, and it, yeah. they had the uh, the full the full motion seats where like it, it only mm. in reality it only moved like a foot up, down, left, or right. But yeah. while yeah. you're watching the movie, and it feels like they're moving a massive amount, you know? Yeah, because the the full immersion, but. Um. Yeah, the entire time I was in line, I was starting to thinking, man, this is a top chain theater, and I'm getting Kent service. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I was so pissed. Kent service. And then, of course, I go inside, and they got the self-serve kiosks. Like, why the hell didn't I just... I, I, I need to go to the movies more so I know where these things are, man. I could have just done that shit and been... <laughs> I might have been able to get some popcorn. And then, of course, afterwards, I had to leave directly to go get my wife and then head to my, my appointment for my back. Oh, oh my Lord. gosh. <sighs> so, um, uh, yeah, so that was the Star Wars viewing experience. Uh, we'll probably talk about <laughs> actual content in the movie, maybe get into some spoilers in the post show. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's, definitely. uh, y- you guys can be part of the pre show and post show if you watch us every Thursday night on twitch.tv slash ritual misery at 7 p.m. Pacific. Yep. Because it's not just like the entire night. Well, I mean, not usually. <laughs> hey, um, so I, I mentioned that I went to the to the doctor, and I don't know if you saw on the social medias, but I got I had a I have a lump on my back. Um, okay. So this is essentially how it's happened. When they went in to do my back surgery, they had to cut into my back. They had to peel back some of the tissues away from the bone, like actually scrape muscle and tendon off the bone, hmm. which creates That's a little po- pocket area. They go in there and they they carve out the areas that they need to carve so that the nerves can actually travel through without catching on shit and causing pain. Then they basically mm-hmm. just sew it all back up and let it sit there, and it, it eventually just heals itself back to the spot. Well, anytime you're messing with the spine, if you if you mess with it at all, even if you don't nick it or anything else, you can still experience these positional headaches that like I, like, you know, we all know we had, I had, right. Cause I explained that already. Um, when I went into the ER for that, I got a lumbar puncture where they actually went through and did a spinal tap to see if I had like meningitis or some other infection in my spinal column. That puncture didn't heal right. That doctor did not, did not do a very good job. Mm-hmm. So the spinal fluid starts leaking into that cavity where all the muscle and t- tissues have been peeled away from my back, mm. creating a like a four inch tall bubble on my back. Mm. Well, well, I went in after that, and, and my doctor was like, "Yeah, that should go down." Went back again; it was bigger, and well, okay. Well, now we're gonna we're gonna treat it more a little more aggressively. Once you do this, do this, do this. Okay, go back the third time, and I'm like, "Look, this is this got to go. This is not right." My wife is there with me. She's like, "That's not good. Let's do something about it." They end up pulling about a half a cup of spinal fluid out of this bubble. Oh. Put me on bed rest for the weekend with pressure on that spot the entire time. And hopefully that, you know, we release some of the pressure, it'll heal up. It's not leaking anymore. Maybe it's already healed or whatever else. No, it, it, it came back with, with the, you know, with the fury. So Tuesday I went in and got a blood patch, a blood patch, a blood patch, <laughs> yeah. A blood patch is where you go in, you lay down on a table. This, this, uh, 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 what do you call the people? An- anesthesiologist goes in okay. a one, one, one level above. Cause I had the, my, my surgery was L4, L5, L5, S1. So the spinal tap was at the L3, L4, you know, one spot above my surgery. The neuro, uh, the, the anesthesiologist had to go to L2, L3 cause it's one spot above where the, where the spinal tap was. So they they put this needle into your back, into your spinal column, which feels fucking weird to begin with. 
<laughs> meanwhile, they, I, I can't imagine. Meanwhile, they draw blood, and he he starts pushing putting his blood into your spinal column because the idea is that the blood the pal, the blood pal, 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 the blood will coagulate and and clog the hole. It's it's like when you put the shit in your tires in the in the the you know the the green slime or whatever is supposed to clog the holes, now, right? Now this was your own blood, yes, right? my like own they, blood. They drew it from you and then. Put they're, it back in. A they're drawing point. it by IV out of my r- r- left hand and immediately going and inserting it into my spine. Okay. All right. This sounds like a like a Rube Goldberg machine. It, it, okay. It's cr- and then it, this is what the doctor tells me. He tells me, the anesthesiologist, he's like, um, you'll know when I should stop because you'll get what some people call a sense of, of, of feeling full. Like, I just, I just ate a little while ago. I'm kind of full now. Like, what, what are you talking <laughs> about? You know? <laughs> So he's like, I don't know how to explain it because I've never had it done. I'm saying, okay, well, that, that's not increasing my my trust in you right now. But <laughs> he's t- telling like, me this. It's like cops are not allowed to tase anyone until they've been tased. Right. right. Like, you, well, you can't really, I mean, that it can't apply to everything in doctorisms because you can't, like, like <laughs> well, you can't uh, you can't perform a, a lobotomy until you've had one done. Like, you don't want <laughs> yeah. that, you know? Um, <laughs> oh, hopefully nobody's getting trained on that. Uh, uh there are no male doctors that can perform hysterectomies because they've never had one done on them. Like it, 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 things like that just no, don't I work. Mean, right. There's some merit in that probably. But, uh. <laughs> um, but he, he's like, you'll, you'll, you'll get a, a sense of feeling full. And I was like, okay, so we're joking about it. He's got 10 CCs in. We're still, we're chit chatting, you know, it still feels awkward, but at least when he's not pushing on the needle, I can't feel it at my back, you know, cause that's the most awkward part. Right. And I'm, I'm completely conscious. They gave a local anesthetic on the skin just so I didn't feel the big ass needle going in. But other than that, it's just, there's it's wide awake. Mm. 20 cc's goes in. Okay. And we're still talking. We're still chit chatting. And I'm, I'm getting kind of nervous because my anxiety of, you know, having something in my spine, I, I'm on a little bit of Valium. I am, I did have take some Valium. So I'm, I'm, my anxiety had a buffer zone, right? Yeah. 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 But you, but you know me, when, once I start getting freaked out about something like it just, <laughs> it's like those little fireworks that spin it up into the air. And <laughs> so I'm starting to get anxious. 30 cc's has gone into my back. And, and the, the, uh, the IV wasn't comfortable. It was in, in my hand. And usually an IV, it hurts when they stick it, but then you're fine. Well, this hurt when she stuck it and it hurt while she like traveled down the vein. Like it was just an oh. uncomfortable IV. Not a, not a bad one. There's no bruising or anything, but it's just okay. uncomfortable. Well, finally he's, he's on the fourth little, cause you're doing 10 cc's at a time. And he starts on the fourth one. Cause so I've got 30 cc's going back. And uh, <laughs> these guys says, what was that again? <laughs> um, <laughs> and all of a sudden, like there's pressure in the back of my head. There's pressure all the way down to my tailbone. Just pressure. I don't know, I don't know how to explain it other than pressure. And I was like, oh, there it is. I know what they meant by full now. <laughs> Um, oh man. Yeah, that was awkward. That was really this this whole back surgery has been a a, a comedy of near tragic. Oh god. Like nothing has gone necessarily wrong. It just hasn't gone as right as it should have. Just unpleasantness. Yes, exactly. It's it's been it's been crazy. So that's gone. The the bump on my back is actually soft. Um I don't know how long it's going to take for for my body to actually reabsorb that spinal fluid, but it is softening. It's not this rock hard lump in the middle of my back. So hopefully that was effective. Um, and we'll see. Uh, my headaches are pretty much gone. I get random headaches now instead of like every time I stand up or sit down, it's just, I'll, yeah. I'll be sitting here and just be like headache and then it just kind of fades away, but it's still better than I moved my head too fast and I got a migraine for two minutes. So that was oh, my week. progress. <laughs> Damn, man. Um, yeah, best of luck. Yeah. Hey, did you know we're going to start paying for TRICARE now? Active duty has to pay for TRICARE. Wait, what? Yeah. No. Yeah, we got the flyer. Uh, my wife picked it up uh, a couple of days ago at the clinic. Bullshit. It's like $267 for an individual or $350 for, for a family annually. So it's still not bad. Well, yeah, that's still cheap, but what the fuck? Right. Wow. Yeah, and this is before the stupid tax bill passed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> mm. 
Hey, we're good till January now, at least on the uh, the government shutdown. That's they, a... they pushed back that decision till January. <sighs> I am so completely and utterly. We're we're gonna go political here for a second. All right, just for a second. I I <laughs> I cannot express in words, not just because of legalities, but just for lack of of uh, vocabulary. It's not in my lexicon to express how utterly disappointed with our government and their, and the officials thereof that I currently am. Mm. I, I can't do it. It's just, it's, it saddens me to no end. My local representation, my national representation, my national representation on the world stage, just all of it is just disappointing. So there's, there's my, my political speak for the night. All right. I think that was 30 times the time that you were allotted. Uh, <laughs> and you know what? That I'm just following Congress's uh, Congress's pattern there. Yeah, I'm back here just begging the gavel. Yeah. We will have order. Yeah. We will have order. Um, the gentleman yields the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, the the gentleman is yielded exactly one second for his rant. Right. Okay, um, we will have order. <laughs> Um, Willie Scott yeah. says uh, we should do a filibuster, and uh, that's kind of what this show is every week. Hey, um, if you <laughs> like to support this show, you can go, cruise on over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Uh, all the shenanigans the Patreon was trying to pull are, are beyond us, behind us, and it not going to happen. News. It was fake it was, news. Yeah, it was, it was, it was so, <laughs> so completely stupid. Um, but whatever, it's, it's, all, it's all good now, so... We appreciate yep. everyone uh, who stuck it, stuck through the 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 non changes with us. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, if if you like what we're doing and you want to help us out, uh, show us that you give a fuck and give us a buck. Uh, Patreon dot com slash ritual misery. We thank you very much. Uh, dude, there has been. I'm I'm so glad you put this in here. You, you put battery throttling in in the. <laughs> yeah. In like, the show what notes. the fuck? <laughs> Like, um, okay, so talking about fake news, right? Like, like most of the time, like, and not what certain politicians call fake news. I mean, legitimate fake news is a problem. It's been a problem for several years where, you know, conspiracy theories, uh, just plain, just made up bullshit finds its way in the news, sometimes on purpose, sometimes on, you know, on accident or whatever. Um, but it happens. And you, you kind of get this like mental filter of like, okay, that's probably bullshit. You don't pay attention to it. And then, mm. well, well, this seems legit. Like, you know, I've read 14 articles on this. It's probably true. Uh, ba battery throttling, like app, uh, we're, we're talking specifically about Apple, mm -hmm. uh, throttling batteries. Through software older updates. models, throttling older models of iPhones with newer updates. Yeah. So, well, this is the, the point I was trying to make though. This is something that, this isn't new, like n new to our like knowledge, I guess. Like right. people have been talking about this for a while, but it kind of hit my fake news filter of, it just sounded like a conspiracy theory. Like, okay, oh no, big bad Apple is doing bad stuff. Uh, this one turns out to be true, man. This is, Apple came clean, with, what was it, yesterday? Mm-hmm. About this, well, it, it, like, it broke on Mashable, and kind of went from went crazy from there, and I think I'm pretty sure it was Mashable. Now, now I'm second guessing myself. Uh, yeah, Mashable sounds right. Uh, or no, oh no, I don't think it was Mashable. Um, <laughs> it wasn't The Verge. No, I, who was I, it? I love it when you uh, when the when wire you... was it the wire? Uh... Not the wire. Wired. Wired. Wasn't it Wired? I think it was Wired. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. One of the tech, one of the tech news sites, uh, broke this uh, because of a an Apple employee. Mashable. It was Mashable. Oh, it was Mashable. It was Mashable. Okay. Well, I guess. Uh, look at, look at me with my on, references. I guess it was on Wired that I maybe they they re-reported the same thing. Um. Yeah, but the the, the employee was he an employee, current employee, or an ex employee? He was an engineer, right? That that was working on this. Uh, yeah, this makes good good audio here. <laughs> uh, well, no, so Amos Amos is finding the article right now. So 
Anyway, so basically it, it, it kind of came out through an unofficial source and then it was reported on and then Apple was like, okay, we can't we can't not talk about this. So they came out with a statement. Well, uh, the, basically the the, the, ahead, the headline came out that uh, Apple del- deliberately prevents chips on older iPhones from reaching their full processing power under certain conditions the company has confirmed. And that's exactly what it is. Um, yep. They the Apple says our goal is to deliver the best experience for customers, which includes overall performance and prolonging the life of their devices. Lithium ion batteries become less capable of supplying peak current demands when in cold conditions have a low battery charge or as they age over time, which can result in the device unexpectedly shutting down to protect its electronic component components. Oh man, I almost finished that one. <clears throat> Last year, we released, released a feature for iPhone six, six S and S E to smooth out the instantaneous peaks only when needed to prevent the device from unexpectedly shutting down during these conditions. We've now extended that feature to iPhone seven with iOS 11.2 and plan to add support for other products in the future. I love this because this is not an apology. This is all fact-based, and they're saying, yeah, we're doing it. It's what's right, and we're going to continue to do it with future models. Yep. Um, yeah. And I, I, so I, I originally saw it from uh, from Pete Pichel, uh saying, would you rather have full iPhone performance with random shutdowns or slow performance but a more stable, longer-lasting battery? And... It was, I mean, I thought it was a good question. 51% of the people that responded to, to it said, full power, come what may. 49 said, stable battery, please. So it's evenly split. Mm. And this is one of those things. He had so many replies of like, I want full power all the time, and I want great battery life. And a lot of people were like, both, 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 both. And my, my response was very simple. And I think it sums it up perfectly as far as my, you know, how I feel about it. This is really a testament to common persons uh, to the common person's understanding of the current state of battery technology. Both isn't feasible, and it's not sinister or a design error. It's science. I doubt the evidence would say anything different on Android devices. What it comes down to is batteries degrade over time. Lithium-ion batteries charge faster than, say, NICAD. They hold more of a charge than NICAD. They withstand recharging more than NICAD ever did. But they're still batteries, and they still degrade. the The process of of using a battery, of charging a battery, and discharging a battery, and, and getting that electricity out of it, degrades the battery itself. Mm. The only thing that you could do to prevent this with our current technology at the current sizes that we're talking about are to have replaceable batteries, which most manufacturers of main 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 line phones have gotten rid of. Yeah, uh, and and I th- that's kind of the key thing. It it's consumer replaceable batteries, right? That that we're talking about because you can you can absolutely get a new battery for your iPhone. Mm-hmm. That is a thing that can happen. And if you're a technically capable person, uh, mo- you know more than just that. Yeah, I, you know I I change a light bulb once in a while. I mean, like actually, like competent with small electronics, um, you can replace your battery. Or you right. can go to an Apple store or what what have you and get your battery replaced. If, if that's really what you want to do with your iPhone 5. Right. Or I guess, well, I guess 6, six. is when it starts, right? You know, um, like if you're still rocking an iPhone 6 and you really, like, this is like a make or break moment for you with the iPhone, like, okay, first of all, really? Right. And second, go fucking replace your battery. So uh, Krug, <laughs> Krug in the chat room brings up a, a, a thing, and, and I'm glad he brought it up. My old iPhone 6S Plus and my wife's old iPhone iPhone 6S Plus were re well I don't say regifted because they weren't gifted to us they were handed down as gifts to my mom and my oldest daughter this Christmas they both received them today I was helping my mom set hers up right before we started the show before I sent it to them I went into the Apple store and said hey what's the status on this battery at 80 percent capacity if you're still under Apple Care they will replace the battery for free. After your yep. Apple Care r- runs out, you have to pay for the replacement, which is usually the cost of the of the battery, you know, fifty nine bucks or whatever, plus like twenty dollars or forty dollars for the actual, you know, uh, labor service. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's about a hundred bucks to re- replace your battery. It's still cheaper than buying a new phone because the cheapest phone is still what four hundred bucks or whatever, and you get a brand new battery and the performance and everything else is amazing. 
the batteries that we sent them are both just above the mark where Apple re will replace them. So here in a few months, I'm going to have them go to the Apple store and get their battery replaced for free because by then it will have degraded that little bit. That's after oh, about a year and a half of very steady, everyday use, constant use, like using it to the battery was dead almost every day for 450, 500 days. Mm -hmm. That's about the life expectancy that I would have with today's batteries. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So it, it's not even an issue like this. People that want all this battery technology in their phones and they want to be able to run it at full power for years on end clearly don't understand any of the science behind it. I, I think the I think the biggest issue here and this is kind of the, I think this would have pretty much fixed most people's um, uh, issue with this is if they had announced this at the time that they included this in the iOS update if that was in the release notes, if they would have explained it there, mm. I don't think people would be as up in arms. Of course, I mean, people are going to be pissed about everything. Like, oh, you took away 1% of my CPU processing power. Like, come on. Like, you know, people are just going to be pissed just to fucking be pissed, mm -hmm. especially if they're already like, uh, 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 what's the word? Like, like brand prejudice or whatever. Like if you already just for whatever reason hate Apple, you're going to be like, See, see, I told you, fuck Apple. Look at them. They suck. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, at least they're doing something about it. What is Android or what is uh, Samsung doing? Anything? I don't yeah. know. Probably, they're not acknowledging probably the, the same thing. Right, right. Yeah, probably. But I think all of this like really would have been fine if there was a an actual announcement. Mm. What what a year ago, year and a half ago, whenever they started this, if they would have said, Hey, this is part of the new iOS update. Uh, this is what we're doing. This is why. This is just kind of, you know, this is what it is. On that same token, though, if where do you, where, where does that rabbit hole end? You know, where is this slippery slope? Because you start detailing, oh, here's exactly how we're handling, you know, because it probably said something along the lines of new battery management features or whatever. You start going into the nitpicky of exactly how they're doing all of that. You could get, sh get, get release notes that are, you know, pages and pages long for the most minor sure, updates. Sure, but that's that's why like when you when you update your iOS, like do you read do you actually read the release notes? N no, because it, it never says anything. I, you have to go into the developer site to actually read well, the real see, release notes. Well, yeah, and that's <laughs> that's the thing. I that's exactly what I was going to say. So I I read the like the front page release right. notes, the, the basically truncated the, version that they give you. Yeah, it explains like what new features are added, you know, bug fixes, security patches, what have you, right? But if you want the nitty gritty, you got to go, you got to dig. Mm -hmm. Well, they provide a link, but then you got to, you know, you got to sort through the, you know, pages and pages of, of release notes. Of developer speak. Right. And I think that's, <laughs> you know, if they put it there, you know, we, we've got, we've got Tom Merritt to break that down for us. We don't have to actually read it. You know what I mean? If, but, but even if, there, if they don't. had published it. Even there, they, they don't give the, the exact details like they did, you know, that they acknowledged here. They would just put something along the lines of, uh, well, advanced battery management allows uh, allows throttling of CPU to compensate for battery conditions, and th that would be all it would say. And nobody would see it until some somebody did a, a research like this. And oh my god, you know, right, right. But that's what I'm saying. If they if they'd put it in there, and if it's a significant enough thing, you know, and I, I mentioned Tom Merritt, but like all of the tech sites, all of the tech shows, everybody would be talking about it and say like, well, you know, Apple said this, you know, da 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 da, right. and it's fine. Nobody had an issue with it because. It actually makes sense, uh, but it's this whole like out of no a Apple admits to fucking with your shit, like you know what I mean. Like yeah. it, it was a necessary um, negative publicity, uh, I think, uh, just because of the way that they decided to handle it. Welcome to the world. Everyone's fucking with your shit all the time. That's that's, <laughs> yeah. that's why it works because they're fucking with it to make it better. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> th this is this is only this is a non-issue to me, except for that it shows how many people don't understand. Yeah, and, and this is the, the thing with, with, with so many of the issues that that come up in you know in the not just in the tech news spectrum, but it's just like pretty much the news always. It's only an issue to me because people have an issue with it. <laughs> that, that's true with so many things. I mean, some things are legitimate news, and I, I you know I have an issue with the thing, or I'm interested in the thing, or whatever, and it's a, it's genuinely of interest to me. Uh, but ha man, I swear to I swear to God, probably over half of the news that I read, it's only an issue to me because people are making 
an issue of it. Right. Meanwhile, the and big that, stuff's happening in the world we don't even care about. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Hey, man, is it about time for this right here? So we just saw Star Wars, and I figured this if we're is, gonna do a TED talk. This is one of your yeah. This is one of your little five minute dealies that you put in there at the last minute that is just completely perfect for. I actually for found the this. Event. Yeah, I I found this last night. I I would have listened to a fifteen minute TED talk last night if there was one about Star Wars. The one that I found was five, like what, five minutes and 20 seconds or yeah. something. <laughs> and we're talking about Todd Scott. First of all, he's got two first names. One of the things that I hate most in the world. He's Todd Scott, an intergalactic guide to using a defibrillator. And what he does is essentially, this is a PSA. This is, this is a humorous how to guide on using a, an AED an uh, automated external defibrillator. I think that, yep. I think I got that right. Yep. Uh, and he, he adds humor to it and basically teaches you how to use it at the same time in a five minute video. This as corny as it was, is pure genius. Love this. Yep. Absolutely. So basically he was, he's teaching you how to use it in AED. If you lived in the star Wars universe. Right. So he's talking about Wookiees and Ewoks and Yoda and all of this sort of stuff. And he what didn't you didn't mention what you droids to... though. I wish you would have mentioned <laughs> How to use one on droids? Well, I, you know, I don't classic. think it would work because of the the whole arcing thing, and you know, just it, I, you know, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's exactly what you said. It, it it's a public service announcement. It, it's a it's a very valuable teaching tool. Five minutes mm. is all it takes, and you will learn how to use an AED with this guy talking about Star Wars. So it's and, super and he, entertaining. He never actually shows an AED either. It's all like. But marker, it's all, like, it's all like child drawings. <laughs> like it really is. Like like a, I've seen five year olds draw better than this with cra- and this with crayons. In fact, it's, it's it's bad, but that just adds to to but the it, the whole thing. It's, it's 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 awesome. It's a great little video. You should check this out. It is so great. It's it's really good. I highly recommend this. The, there was only one negative about the thing, and it had nothing to do with the presentation itself. There was one dude in the audience that thought everything that this guy said everything. was hilarious. Like two, so, two lines into the, into the Ted talk, he's in the back laughing so hard. You can hear him over the dude. And like, yes. And it's like every, cause the dude says a joke, probably what every third or fourth sentence. Right. Like right. It, it, well, every, every new humor. slide is, is something to laugh about. Right. But every time he said something, even moderately funny, you get this guy in the background. There's, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dude, really, guy? That, like, that's the guy that just came from the bar. This is right after lunch, and he decided to drink <laughs> instead of eat. That's what that is. Oh my gosh! Oh my god! It was great. I watched this one with Steph, and the whole time, like, I just kept looking at her. And I'm like, this fucking guy. <laughs> She's like, oh my god, I'm getting a headache from this guy's <laughs> laughter. Uh, this reminds me. Okay, if you're in the if you're if you're part of our audience and you know what Bob and Tom is and you know if there's a uh, a, a massive track of just them laughing. I don't need jokes. I don't need sound effects. I just want a track of them laughing. That yeah, yeah. Cause, because holy crap, I was listening to some Bob and Tom the other day. We we went through the we went through the uh, the 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 humorous Christmas songs. You know, Grandma got run over by a reindeer, which is like one of my all time favorites, mostly because sure. I didn't really care for my grandma too much. <laughs> uh, we what went to put the dick on the snowman. Uh, no, we di- we didn't cover that one. We didn't cover that one. Uh, <laughs> but we went through um uh you know oh, what, what was D- Dave and Doug McKenzie and and uh the the, the ten things that, or the the twelve things of Christmas that are really a pain to me the twelve pains of Christmas you know oh yeah straining yeah. up the lights you know all that kind of uh, and we went through all that kind of stuff and it started because I was listening to Bob and Tom on Apple Music and that that was just what randomly came on and that got me thinking Man, back in the day, you and I just wanted a laugh track of Bob and Tom just laughing, like cut out yeah. everything else, just just isolate their mics. Maybe, maybe uh, what's her name and 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 uh, what's his Christy. nuts? Yeah, Christy and 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 uh, and oh. um, uh, chick, chick, chick yeah, McGee. yeah, chick McGee. Get, get them in there too, but just just their laugh tracks. That's all we need because that would be <laughs> beautiful. If I could get like thirty seconds of just them laughing at something, 
Um, <laughs> and on that same note, uh, Bob and Tom, where the hell is all your shit? Where is it? It's not on Apple Music. It's not on Spotify. I look for oh, I look for it in places. Well, Back in '98 is the earliest album I can find, and that's the Monica Lewinsky one. And it's it's maybe the last album that they put out before the FCC came in and smacked their peepees and told them they can't talk about smacking peepees anymore. Uh, uh, so it, it's like it's like the last great album that they had, and they don't have anything previous to that anywhere that I can find. Yeah, man, that's you know. Gosh, you might have to go to eBay for that. That's uh, that's unfortunate, man. They've got some really I'll, great material. I'll go to a bay, but it won't be eBay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, th- this is the thing that, that pisses me off about piracy and 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 illegally acquiring shit. I am more than willing to pay for this stuff if I can yep. find it in the yep. format that I need. I don't have it. I don't own a tape player. I have tape. <laughs> I have I have Pat Benatar tapes, but I don't own a damn tape player. Yeah, yeah, and I can't Let find alone... a tape player. Yeah, let alone the the capability of, of transferring tape to digital to whatever right. format you need it to. Right. Where are the high quality digital audio files of early Bomb and Tom? Tell me where it is. I will acquire it legally. Until then, it's just a matter of time. Right. Because yep. I'm going to get it. Because I want to enjoy it. I want to pass it on to my kids. I want to share it with my family. It's going to happen. Uh, show me where to do it legally, and by all <laughs> means, it will be done that way. If not. It's your fault, not mine. Yeah. Anybody listening out there, email us ritual misery at, or no, I'm sorry, podcast at ritual misery.com and let us know where to get a hold of Bob and Tom stuff legally. And tell us digital files. Tell us what it is that you can't find that you wish you could find. What, what are, yeah, the, what are the, lost, the lost albums, the lost tracks that you can't find on Spotify, uh, you know, or, or Amazon Music or anything else that you just, would die to have, but you just can't find it anywhere in, in a current format. Yeah, that would be absolutely awesome. And anything in, well, MP3 really, right? Like that's the, yeah. uh, that's everything still, still yeah. MP3 is what? Like 15 years old now. Something uh, like that. Longer than that. Uh, 20 something years old. Cause I was using it when I was, it, really? when I was at Shaw using it. Oh, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, so you're looking at least yeah. 20 years. And that's still like the go-to compressed audio format. Dill Fraunhofer. Yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, man, so we've got something going on in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Well, when, you already mentioned earlier in the show, a week from today, where you're going to have the wonderful, the great, the one and only Richard Gunther back on the show. <laughs> I think this sets a record for the number of appearances for a guest. Uh, it might. Six? Seven mm-hmm. times? Probably more than that. Pro- yeah, probably. It's well, and it's hard to man. Anyway, but yeah, we're we're, is... we're closing out the year with with uh, with with Richard Gunther this year. We're starting the new year with Tay Allen because there's no other way to start a new year on Ritual Misery than with Tay Allen. Yeah, and... so it's basically a mirror of what we did last year. We, yeah, we right. ended with Richard, began with Tay, uh, and then I think the the year before with... that we started with Tay, and then we had Richard follow up, and he was pissed yeah. off at us. So now he's the the tail end of the year and she starts it off. (laughs) Yes. But between those two shows, so one week from today is Richard two weeks from today is Tay. But between that is a pretty major event, man. Yeah. We, we are going to be doing as a diamond club community. We will be doing the diamond club new year's Eve streamathon where we will stream for 27 hours straight. Are you Amos? Uh, are you ready for this Amos to, to stream for 27 hours straight? Are are you are you um you got your coffee ready and your Mountain Dew and all that stuff? Um I I, I do have my coffee. I need some more Mountain Dew um and and uh plenty of Excedrin pills. Yeah, well, you know, let you know what never mind. Never mind. Uh how about we stream for an hour? Uh, let some other people kind of take over for us, and then uh, then we'll come back on at the end of it and stream for another hour. Yeah, we that's, can do that. Does that sound better? That sounds good. Cool. Yeah, I think that's 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 how it's gonna go. No, we've got we're gonna do a twenty seven hour straight stream, uh, but Amos and I are only gonna do we're basically gonna bookend the thing, the same mm-hmm. thing we did last year. We're we're gonna introduce, set it up, and then we're gonna close it out at the end, kind of do a recap show. Uh, it was so much fun last year. It is gonna be a total freaking blast this year we've got a lot of great talent 
uh, lined we, we, up for We don't it. have as many people as we did last year, but we have them doing longer segments and more, a little bit more creative uh, uh, availability Ab- for them. Yes, so absolutely. And this is going to be this is going to be so awesome, guys. What I need everyone to do, don't do it now because you're watching us on Twitch. Right. Uh, but audio, audio listeners can do it now. But for the live audience, after our show ends, I need you guys to go over to twitch.tv slash DCTV. Oh, I'm sorry, not DCTV. DC Streamathon. So twitch.tv slash DC Streamathon. This is going to be the hub of all things New Year's Eve Streamathon. The central channel. Yes. So in the the area, actually, Amos, you want to bring this up on screen, the uh, the the page. So right now, there's not much here, but in that black space below the the video screen mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is going to contain the schedule, uh, all of the pertinent info that that the audience members need to know about the show. That is going to be populated probably this weekend. And if you just, it, you don't even have to know who, like what the channels are that are that are playing and kind of try to follow along. The schedule is going to be there and there is going to be a method in place where we basically, it's kind of like auto switching. So it's going to be almost like last year with with uh, the way we did it over DCTV. Uh, this is going to be like the Twitch version of that. Mm-hmm. And I think it's going to work great. I think it's going to be awesome. And man, I am so looking forward to this. I, I can't wait to watch this myself. I can't wait to be a part of it. And I can't wait for the audience to experience what we've got got lined up. And also, the other thing I'm really looking forward to is raising money for Donate Life America. This yep. is going to be so awesome. We set a goal this year for $2,500. I, I think we can do it, man. We almost got that much last year for the extra life charity that we did. Mm-hmm. I, I think we're going to surpass that. I, I really hope we hit our $2,500 goal. Uh, th- this is a charity that, uh, that um, promotes and uh, enables donations of, of uh, organs, eyes, um, tissue, organs, eyes, and tissue is what it is. And it's, it's such a great charity. They, they rate very highly uh, of the the charities that you know they only take a little bit for admin costs and the vast vast majority of your gift actually goes to the cause right it, they're they're so great it's gonna be awesome i just man i'm i'm so looking forward to this it's gonna be awesome dude and, and for the record we didn't have a problem with our charity last year we didn't we didn't bail on them because you know extra life whatever it, it's a great place to go and things like that absolutely but they cut they cut off their their donation period at like midnight in Pacific, and we still had like a third of the of the marathon to go. So. Yes, that that's a good point. So this charity, the way that the way that their donor pages are set up, it's fully customizable. So hopefully they don't the way cut that us off I, halfway through. Yeah. So the way that I set it up, our our campaign is going to run through noon Eastern. I think. Yeah, I think I I think I set all the times for Eastern. So noon on the 1st of January. So noon on New Year's Day is when our campaign officially ends. Uh, so, you know, and I could have set that at, at any time, but I, I wanted it to end but after, you know, give people enough time, like a couple hours after the stream ends, so that if they, you know, they needed to go find their credit card or something like that, they can do that right. and not have to worry about it cutting off. But I wanted it to end pretty definitively on New Year's Day so that we can do our tallies and and uh, get those numbers out to people. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be awesome. And in fact, if people want to get a preview of the donation campaign, and even if, if you want to, you know, you're not going to be able to watch the streamathon, but you really want to contribute, it is open now so that you can donate now if you really want. Uh, head over to yolo420.com slash donate life. Yolo420.com slash donate life. And you can actually donate now if you want. Look at that. And oh, there it cool. is. Yep. So as you can see, the $2,500 goal is there. We have not accepted any donations yet, which is not surprising because it's the first time I've really advertised the, the address for it. 
but if you click on members there, Amos, there are already several teams already signed up as like you know with their own donor pages so that they will create their own URLs to give to the people during their streams so that they'll get the credit for for earning that money. And and like I said last week, we you know we might gamify it you know, whoever the top donor is uh, you know, or the, you know, the team lead or whatever we, you know, we might do a t-shirt or something like that. Right. I haven't decided, but it will probably do something. I, I almost guarantee we'll, we'll gamify it in, in some way. <laughs> um, so, but it's going to be, it's going to be great, man. I am, I am so excited for this. Yeah. And this is something we are going to continue doing each year in one way or another. So, um, if you were, if you didn't get a chance to sign up this year and you want to do it next year, by all means, let us know. Um, Absolutely. I, I think Fact, each, each year we're going to start out, start earlier and earlier on getting people signed up for it and getting things on track. Yeah. In fact, if if people are interested in streaming for this now, go ahead and contact us. Uh, you know, like I said before, uh, podcast at ritualmisery dot com, or uh, what is it? Do, do you remember? Oh, it's a uh, yellow four twenty dot com slash twenty seventeen streamathon. Yeah, if you go there, you can still sign up, and we can use you as a backup streamer in case something comes up. Uh, like last year, uh, Captain Fubar signed up for two streams. He did his first one, which was absolutely awesome, and then for his second one, about an hour before he was supposed to go live, I think his power went out, yep. and he was not able to stream. So we had to we had to do some quick maneuvering and and get somebody to do an extra stream. Uh, if you want to be a substitute like backup streamer. We'll gladly accept that. And in fact, if if you just want to be a part of the team and maybe do a stream before New Year's, like if you want to do one on um, you know December thirtieth or something like that, and use our conduit for the for the Donate Life campaign, uh, hit me up and uh, we can we can make that happen. The more money we raise for these folks, uh, the better. So I, I definitely do not want to inhibit that yep. if you want to be a and, part of it. And it's important to notice that we are, we're going through a third party so that we are not handling any of the money ourselves. It's, that's one of our goals when we did this last year was yep. we don't want to be responsible, um, for people saying, yep. Oh, well, we didn't donate this, you know, well, how, how do we know it's going to go or whatever else you're going, this is all going directly to the, the charity itself. So. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And we, we kind of, we kind of <clears throat> did something like that the first year where we were accepting donations and then basically on trust that we were going to send it to where we said we would send it to, which we absolutely did. Actually, no, nobody, nobody trusted us. They all went directly to the thing. Yeah. Well, which is great. <laughs> yeah. Which is great. But we did, oh. we did take some, some money and we, we were entrusted to send it. And that's, you know, we absolutely did. We fulfilled that obligation, but it was kind of this that weird, like, uh, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> you right. know? So, from now on, we are, we will always one hundred percent of the time go through third party. Yep, it's just it's just easier that way. It covers everybody's ass. Hey, uh, can mm-hmm. where can people find more about you, man? If they just want to follow you and stuff. Yeah, hit me up on Twitter. That's probably the best place. I am at rm underscore del noche. Uh, just whatever your favorite uh, social media thing or or whatever. Just look for Del Noche. I'm probably on there in some variation. Uh, I'm Del Noche some places. I'm Del Noche 77 some places. Uh, just you know, just look me up. Untapped is a great place if you're a beer person. Hit me up. I'm Del Noche there. Right. Uh, and you can find me at Ethan Kane. You can follow the show at Ritual Misery. You can go on by uh, RitualMisery.com. Find out all the cool stuff we're involved with. I still I. So I'm doing a Game of Thrones rewatch podcast with. Uh, with uh, Richard Gunther and with Jenny Josephson, and my 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 timing has not allowed me to release it yet. So, but that is coming very soon. The teaser episode is done. It should be out. I'll, I'm gonna hopefully get that out by next week. And we are we're all the way through the first season. So we're doing two at a time. Um, it's 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 an amazing thing. Jenny is hilarious, and Richard, having never seen it before, he is full of surprises. And I'm basically just the guy recording it all and putting it out. But those two individuals, they're, they're amazing. And look for that. It's called Let's Talk About Thrones. And uh, I'll make sure that I publish that before I publish this episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, our live audience got a uh, sneakier peek. 
Yep. And awesome. uh, all that all that being said, uh, cruise on by uh, richmisery.com and you'll see that and see so much more that we have going on. You can submit ideas on our subreddit. We haven't had anybody hop by our subreddit yet. Go by there and, and tell us what a great, fantastic, amazing time you were having when you were avoiding listening to this show. And uh, <laughs> that's going to be ritualmisery.reddit.com. We'd like to thank Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use his music. And I'm going to hit the little button that starts his music right now. And uh, thank you for listening and or watching and or seeing us live. For Kent, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> it's the Diamond Club New Year's Eve Streamathon. Yeah, Who the fuck? Fuck off! <laughs>